Hi friends. So, I saw Leanne Likes and Simone put out a call, put out a tag, and I decided that I'm it. I also saw Chris Sainz's response last night. Loved it, loved it. Um, so I thought, let's answer. And why not be the awkward person going on a lunchtime walk the day after the storm to talk about fountain pins. That's normal, right? I think it's probably normal. Imagine I'll have to take breaks because let me tell you, your arm gets tired holding the phone up like this. So, question one is when and and how does your fountain pen journey begin? So, look, I'm not good with dates. Um, there's some people up here. So, we're gonna pause and walk past them. Okay, I think he's augering a drain pipe. The road is crumbling away. Um, anyway, I'm not good with dates. But I think the better question for me is, when did my fountain pen ink journey begin? Because to the best of my memory, the reason I got into fountain pens at all is Emerald of Shavor. I saw that ink and I said, you must be mine. Well, I saw that ink in large swatches on Tamora River paper. So that's when it started. It was really soon after Emerald of Shavor was released. So, um, I was foolish back then and didn't buy the right pens. For it doesn't matter still love that ink still thankful it led me down this amazing rabbit hole so was that like 2015 or 2016 I think um, but yeah wanted that ink had to get a pen that would use it Second question, favorite inks in the beginning? Well, that's a tough one. And what are my go-tos now? So, I started off loving Emerald Shavor, obviously, but it did not love the pens that I had because the fountain pen subreddit. My general advice for you is if someone recommends you something and they don't know you already and they don't ask a bunch of questions, ignore their recommendation because it's not based on what you are likely to enjoy. It's based on what they like. So, for instance, you know, a good friend of mine, you know, he's probably not actually going to love Souls Like Games. Because you love one doesn't mean he will. Possibly I'm calling people out with that statement. But it's not 
the, the, the community that I watch that loves souls like games. Just anyway, Fountain Pen subreddit is like it's got to be a Japanese extra fine or go home. That's a horrible suggestion for me. Anyway, as a result, I wound up with pens that couldn't use the inks I loved, aka the ink I loved Emerald Ash for. So then I just got into inks that worked. My first few are from a brand that I don't actually buy anymore. Um, but uh, my current go-tos, well, I still really love Emerald of Shavor. And Diamine Earl Grey is a definite go-to ever since I got it. But um, I suppose what I look for in, in an ink is a color because whatever the ink, you can find a pen to make it work. Now, we're going to pause again. Also, I'm getting overheated. I don't think the wool pants were necessary. Okay. Someone's coming up behind me. Uh, whatever. Question three is, how have my ink and pen tastes changed over time? And I kind of think they haven't. What has changed over time is my experience. And thus, I've been better able to uh, put into words what it is that I like about a pen and ink. And a broadening experience has led me to find the thing that honestly I know I'd have been happy with all along, which is medium and broad nib, baby. <laughs> so I don't feel like that's changed. I feel like I got into this late enough in life that stuff like like my handwriting really tough to change at this point I like to write quickly which usually means sloppily it also means um, tends to be larger and medium and broad suit my writing style and my writing speed much better so, I don't feel as though anything has changed except my awareness and understanding. Sorry for the deep breathing, but this is kind of a slog of a hill. So, so let's see. Are there any inks and pens I haven't tried but would like to? Well, on the ink front, all of them. <laughs> I'd love to swatch every ink. That would be the end of it. I'm primarily motivated by color. So I wouldn't need to have it or necessarily even write with it. On pens, yeah, I suppose I'd love to try like the Falcon soft broad or any pilot in broad. And more Italian pins. Uh, Monte Grappa, Aurora. Uh, Leonardo, um, who am I forgetting? Y'all know. 
Anyway, it was in my head when I started talking and it's gone now. Love to try those. But doesn't mean I necessarily would love to buy them. Um, a holy grail pen. So I know this is a standard term, but y'all, the holy grail was never found and was just always sought after. Why would I want that? I don't want pens that I can't have. I want pens that I can have. So if we want to talk about pens that I love, but that I'm unlikely to ever acquire, um, the Mont Blanc Agatha Christie, I don't personally believe the Mont Blanc are good value propositions. Um, I feel like, nah. So, unless someone was like, hey, you want this free pen? I'm not getting that pen. But, ultimately, nah. I don't think I have one. Visconti, that's the other Italian brand. Thanks, friends. Um, let's pause now. I'm gonna rest my arm. Then we'll get into the latter half of these questions. Okay. It was good timing because then I passed some people. Um, how many pins do you own? Let's say 40. It's close enough. Do you have a limit to the number of pins you can own? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? Whatever. How do you know when you've reached that limit? Why would I limit myself for something that I love? Like, if I was causing myself financial harm, good reason to limit yourself. If I did not have enough living space, good reason to limit myself. Otherwise, whatever. Not about artificial limits. I do have two pen cases. One is a whew, 40 pin from Galen Leather. The other is a really cute one a friend sent me one year for Christmas. If you see this, Phil, thank you again. Um, but this would be nice if my collection fit in those. It does. But if it overflowed it, I could buy or make another pin case. Um, that being said, how do I know when I've hit the limit? Well, I'm not going to force myself to buy pens. Um, right now, I'm feeling pretty happy with what I have and not feeling like I need this thing or that thing. So perhaps it's a sort of limit, but to follow to the next question, given this, what would you do if another pen or eight came along that I wanted? Presumably, I would buy it. <laughs> Again, assuming that I had the money in space. Uh, I'm not about imposing artificial limitations on myself in general. Um, Chris talked about a good analog, which is people into purses. And she mentioned her $300 Dooney and Burke bag that she wanted. And $300 is a lot to spend on a bag. And I think I've done that. Um, I would always rather have a sustainable product if I can, which generally means 
leather and not some sort of plastic like vinyl um I, uh, cloth is also acceptable <laughs> this cloth of course has many pollution concerns so just leather nothing's perfect that's my choice for me um the bags that i've spent that much money on i still have and if you get into handbags at all you'll know that three hundred dollars is not a high price to pay there are many bags that go for thousands like the price of a car um same thing for watches i remember seeing a watch and i was like oh that's a nice looking watch maybe i could get that and then the price was like twenty four thousand dollars i thought hmm i can't get that watch <laughs> i'm not at that point where i could just be like you know yeah i'm gonna spend the amount of a small car on a thing i wear on my wrist no problem for those of you who are at that point no judgment. The amount of money that is a lot for a given person varies pretty frequently throughout, oh, we're going under the tree, um, throughout their lives. So, you know, I've been at the point where I just ate rice and ramen because I couldn't afford more than that for food. And I would do exercises when I was hungry because I couldn't really eat more than a meal a day. So I've been at that point. Um, I was very slim back then. <laughs> I'm glad to not be at that point. But compared to some folks, I bet they might look at my life and be like, how does she live that way? She's such a savage. So who knows? Um, I've kind of gone off piste here. Piste? Off the trail. Both literally and figuratively. I mean, there is a trail here. So I really like these questions. They are really good ones. Um, I think it's interesting and maybe shows a little bit of the way Simone and Leanne approach their pens and inks and perhaps their lives in general. It shows a sort of restraint. Um, that I admire, but do not strive for personally. Um, I tend to go through phases in any of my hobbies there's always an acquisition phase but then there's always a phase where just enjoying what I have and um, great example of this is that's Mount Tam by the way uh, is sewing and knitting I have a ton of yarn and fabric and because of that I can in a spur of a moment, just say, you know what, I want to make something, and then I can go do it, and I don't have to go out and buy supplies. And that's good for me because I'm a bit impetuous. Do I want to go back the way I came? Do we want to go walk on the street? This is the longer walk, so we'll take the street. At any rate, Really good timing because I'm done talking about this Just in time for the hardest part of this walk to end But also just in time to not look like a total weirdo walking around with my camera held out in front of me <laughs> On the side of the street so Thank you to Leanne and Simone and Chris Sainz for inspiring me to make this video. I hope that this is the version of this that you see. Though, I'm gonna watch it and see if it's too motion sick y. But if it is, you can always just listen. Um, thanks for hanging out with me.